So now we're going to talk about how the prey can actually have defenses to help them either fight back or not get eaten. So we'll start by talking about plants. And plants can have a lot of different ways of defending themselves. The crappy part about being a plant is you're anchored. So you're just kind of sitting there like, please don't eat me, please don't eat me, right? So they're going to come up with ways to obviously avoid being eaten even if they have to stay there. So one thing could be toxins, right? So um, if something tries to eat them, they're going to get poisoned or get sick. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a later chapter. Um, spines or thorns. Obviously, if something gets a bunch of spines in its mouth, it's not going to be happy. Um, and color warnings. They could actually have bright red berries that are like, hey, if you eat this, you're going to die, right? So that would be an example of that. And then animal defenses are just crazy. There's so many different things that they can do. Um, one of them could be behavioral, right? So a lot of different forms of behavioral defenses. Um, fleeing, right? Running away. Um, hiding. Um, so like going into a hole or, you know, going behind something. Um, Self-defense, so biting or stinging back. Um, appearing larger than you are, so there's a lot of things that will puff up. Actually, I have um, just some hilarious fo footage of a puffer fish in a fish tank, right? And he's upset, and so he's going to puff up like that to make himself feel larger, or look larger, so that you won't attack it, right? This other guy's like, oh, I don't care. Um, but that's a d an example of that. Um, Another thing that they can do is make deep noises so that they sound a lot larger than they are and the predator just won't even go near them. And then mobbing. Mobbing is super awesome. Mobbing is going to be where the prey looks around and goes, wait, there's like a, a thousand of us and there's one of this guy. Let's attack them. And so the prey will actually turn around and attack the predator together. And there's a great video um, that I'm going to post the, below this video and um, I'll title it Mobbing and it is awesome and it shows a bunch of um, water buffalo that are actually mobbing a lion that got one of their young. Super awesome video. Okay, another thing that they can do is faking an injury or death. So you've heard of playing possum, right? So they basically play dead, and they're like, why would you want this? I've been riding here forever, you know, that kind of thing. And then um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a kill deer, but that's a type of bird, and they fake having a broken wing to lure predators away from their nests. And I actually have footage of this right here, so you can see this. So they'll actually limp and... Hopefully you can see them actually doing the crazy walk that they do. But they're basically trying to keep a predator from looking at their nest. So, yeah, they'll stick their wing out and make it look like it's broken. And they'll actually fake an injury so that the predator will go after them. Yeah, he's kind of doing it. <laughs> but they'll stick their wing out and limp and all sorts of crazy stuff. See if he does it a little further down. Okay, so that's going to be another thing that organisms can do. Um, camouflage is going to be in the form of a couple of different things. Cryptic coloration, where you just blend in with your environment, and then deceptive markings like eye spots. And so I've got awesome pictures of this stuff. So here you have a frog that is designed to blend in with the quartz rock that it's found on. Pretty awesome. Um, then you can see these flounder that um, they're blending in with the environment pretty well as well. That's all going to be cryptic coloration. Um, even uh, closer to home, these bighorn sheep, you can kind of see how their color actually does help them to blend in with their environment. And I know an elephant is huge, but still, it's not like they're bright blue or something. And you can see how this elephant is kind of using cryptic coloration to blend in with the environment. Um, this snake, I mean, this is just an awesome picture, but you can see how this snake is actually blending in with its environment very well. It did not end up getting that prey, actually, um, which is crazy. I guess the photographer saw it fighting for a while, and then it let go. Um, and I don't know if you can see the predator here, but there is actually... Um, a cheetah right there, so that's pretty good camouflage. I just like looking at camouflage pictures, and that's still called cryptic coloration. Um, so there's that ghost crab that I was talking about that I put the big red X on, so you could see how that wasn't a good thing to do. Here's a moth here. These little guys, so right here, right here, and right here are pipefish, and they are actually mimicking seagrass. Um, now, there's some other forms of cryptic coloration that you can see here. Um, if you look at any fish, um, pretty much, that, um, you know, swims a lot in the ocean, um, it's not hanging around reefs, you'll notice that their belly is usually very white. And that's because if something is looking up at them from the bottom, 
the sun coming through is actually going to look white, and so will that white belly, so they blend in from under, like looking from underneath. And then if you look at the top, you can see how they're a lot darker at the top, and that's so that if something was looking down at the ocean, they're going to blend in with the surface of the ocean. So that's another a form of cryptic coloration. Now these bottom two are going to be things that we call eye spots. So this is a picture I took when I was in Costa Rica, and um, you can see that this um, moth has actually adapted to look like it has um, owl eyes, right? Right? It looks like a little baby owl. So that's a way that it can kind of, you know, pretend to be something else. And then over here, this is going to be an eye spot right here. So you can see the fish's eye is right here. It has that band to kind of distract from the eye. And so a predator is naturally going to think that that's the eye. So what's going to happen is the predator is going to swim straight towards it, and then it's going to kind of deflect to the direction where it thinks that the eye is, and then that fish is going to go in the opposite way and be like, hey, that wasn't my eye. See ya. Right? So that's kind of cool too. Um, now, there's also mechanical defenses, so um, these guys are obviously going to have spines here that you can see. Porcupines have those nice quills, and then plants can have spines as well, which we, bleh, which we mentioned before. Then there's chemical defenses. So chemical defenses are going to be, these right here are actually stink bugs, so um, they just emit an awful odor, or if you think about a skunk, that's a chemical defense. And then these guys here are going to sting you if you come after them, right? So that's going to be their type of chemical defense that you can see there. Um, now, one thing that I want you to notice about this guy is he's not blending in with his environment at all, right? He is colored to be like, come near me, and it's going to really get stinky, right? That's called aposomatic coloration. So um, these are examples of aposomatic coloration. These thorns are bright red to be like, here are the thorns. Don't come near me. It's not worth it. I took this picture in Costa Rica as well. Actually, both of these. Um, this is an eyelash viper, and so that is not blending in with anything either. That is standing out to be like, here I am. And same with poison dart frogs. They are very, very brightly colored to help them to do that. Now, that being said, there is going to be this whole world of what's called mimicry. And mimicry is where they have evolved to look like something harmful, right? So Batesian mimicry is one form of mimicry where you have the poisonous organism and the non-poisonous organism. Um, uh, actually, I pointed to the wrong one, so don't go by that in the wild. Um, but basically, um, Batesian mimicry is where you have something harmless that's mimicking something harmful. So in this picture, this is actually going to be the poisonous snake, and this is going to be the non-poisonous snake. But you can see they look very similar. Here, you're going to have um, the poisonous butterfly and the non-poisonous butterfly, but you could see they look very similar. And then here, the um, poisonous one is going to be this one up here, and these two are actually non-poisonous. So those are all Batesian mimicry, where you have one that is deadly, and it's being mimicked by ones that are completely harmless. That's going to be different from malarian mimicry, which I'll show you in a second. So here's another example of Batesian mimicry. This is actually a caterpillar that has mimicked um, two different caterpillars that are mimicking poisonous snakes, which I just thought was amazing. Okay, here's malarian mimicry. Malarian mimicry, what's going to happen is all these butterflies that you see here are harmless. Um, they may not taste very good, but they're not going to kill you. So they're kind of in between really bad and really good. And what has happened is these all look very similar to one another, so they've all kind of evolved to look similar, so it's just kind of a safety in numbers type of thing. Okay, in the next part, we're going to talk about that gross stuff that you just saw, which is going to be different types of parasites.